Hello there and welcome to Hustle & Heart TV. I'm Darieth Chisholm. How many of you all grew up ripping pages out of fashion magazines? Watching beautiful models strut the runway in those designer clothes? Or maybe wishing that you could be the next Donna Karen, Versace, Edward Wilkerson, Russell Simmons, Valentino, Carolina Herrera, all of those big names, right? Well, my next guest grew up starry-eyed too, and she turned that eye for fashion into a dream come true after ditching her pre-med education. Designer Kia Tomlin creates high fashion comfort, focusing on various body shapes of everyday women, and her garments are designed to be very comfortable as well as flattering. Her new Uptown Sweats is a wonderful collection with a sporty flair, and no wonder sportiness plays a role. Kia is the wife of Pittsburgh Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin. She's a mother of three and knows the importance of being able to move seamlessly through the various roles that women play throughout the day. Kia was such a joy to spend time with. She's inspired by her own busy lifestyle, and she tells me more about her fashion career, her busy lifestyle, the unique business challenges that those in the fashion industry face, and has some great advice for up-and-coming fashionistas. Kia Tomlin on Hustle & Hard TV. You're watching Hustle & Hard TV, a video podcast show that spotlights expert advice from top money earners, successful entrepreneurs, superstar network marketers, and leading authorities in business and marketing. I'm Darius Chisholm. I'm inviting you into my home and I'm bridging my own personal success as an entrepreneur, MLMer, news anchor, and now video podcast show host to help you leverage more tools and resources, make more money, and generate more ways to take action, become a rock star, and love your journey. Kia, I am so excited to be here with you today. Thank you so much for having me in your beautiful, beautiful design studio. Thank you for uh, being interested. <laughs> this is, I mean, your story is amazing, and, I, and I'm really grateful to be able to tell it and share it with our audience. Um, you know, on Hustle & Heart TV, we talk about uh, ways to just really live what it is that you love doing, and it's clear that you love design and fashion. Where did that come from? I've, uh all my life. Uh, really, I think it started when I realized that I couldn't fit the things that I wanted to wear. I was very small when I was young, and I would look at the other um, fashions, and uh, they didn't make them in children's sizes, and so that's where I started. And as a child then, you, you recognized that, but how did you take that leap from knowing, wait, these clothes aren't necessarily fitting the way that I want, and I'm going to become a designer and make them for myself? <laughs> it, was, it was actually a, a long path. I, growing up, I, I loved to do it, but I saw it more as a hobby. Um, there weren't a lot of, um, wasn't a lot of information out there about being a designer and what all you could do with it. So I just kept it as a hobby and pursued other things. And it wasn't until after I had graduated college with the intent of going to med school that I kind of revisited the idea when I realized kind of the med school and the Mike's coaching career kind of weren't, probably weren't going to be a good mix. <laughs> A lot of people face that too. I think they get to the point in life where maybe they've gone to school and they've intended to become something other than what they end up becoming as they get older. And I'm sure a lot of us can definitely relate to that. When you made that decision, you've, you'd gone to school, medical school, you intended to obviously become a doctor, and then you go into fashion. I mean, were there some fears or some intimidation? And, and, and how do you process that and actually make that leap? I think for me, I realized that, um, yes, I was interested in med school, but I think it was more of, um, it was a dictated path. When you want to be a doctor, you know, you do your undergraduate, you apply to, you take the MCATs, you apply to med school, you go to med school, then you do your residency, you know, you know it was definite steps to achieve that final product, whereas growing up in fashion design, I just never even thought about where you would start, I, who knows. Um, so I think that was my attraction to it initially, and then as I started to realize that that's really what I love to do, just to you know take the advice of a, a friend's mother that said you know find what you love to do and figure out a way to make money doing it. Yeah, and isn't that what what it is when when you become you know compassionate? I shouldn't say compassionate, but passionate around what it is that you want to do. Is you figure out what do I love and let me find the ways to make that happen. As you pointed out, you needed to do it also because to balance your life with your husband's very busy life as the uh, Steelers coach. Well, at the time, not the Steelers coach, but certainly um, coaching. You had to to figure that balance out as well. Right, I did. Um, his career consists of um, very long hours, a lot of moving around. 
Um, we definitely knew we wanted to have a family, and so I just needed to be able to create um, a career path for me that allowed for that. And where'd you go to school, and how did that process work in terms of determining it? Where'd I go to school? Design school. Uh, oh, design school. We actually, um, I was mostly self-taught. Um, growing up, I would just devour textbooks and um, magazines and anything I'd get my hands on, workshops I'd attend. Um, then we were fortunate enough for Mike to get a job coaching at the University of Cincinnati, and they had a fashion design program there. So I was able to study there for the few years that we were there to get kind of the formal training that I was missing. And then, of course, it's, it's history from there. You begin yeah. to, to start designing beautiful pieces. So how does the evolution of design happen in one's mind? When uh, someone is interested in, in fashion and interested in design, I would assume that there, it, it goes from just the basics in terms of understanding how to draw a pattern, how to sew, to actually you know, visualizing and envisioning what a final piece is going to look like. I, in my mind, I'm like, how do you do that? That seemed that that is such a creative mind. Well, it doesn't always take that clean of a path, I guess. <laughs> um, sometimes what you have in your mind, by the time you've gone through the, the concept to the sketch, to the fabric sourcing, to actually the pattern drafting and production, um, you've had to make um, some sacrifices and some um, changes and some for the better. Um, where your final product may not be what you started with. And how does a designer do that then? Is it because you, you, you realize I need to be flexible enough in my approach that my end design may not be what I intended initially, but um, I'm open to allowing it to become that? Or do you stay with it until you actually f finish with the product that you had in mind at, at first? It's a combination of both. Some things in your mind as you start to tinker with it and try to develop it into an actual finished piece, you realize that might not be possible. Um, but let's see, you know, try to evaluate the ways that you could come close or um, make it work. So sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, and just to be open to um, what the final product is. How do you start? When you think about putting a piece together, what is the process of evolution for you? I start with um, more of like a, I guess, a shadowy silhouette in my mind of, of the shape of something that I want to create uh, and then fine tune it by um, evaluating what details I want to include into it, how I want it to function, um, how I want it to um, appear on the body. I'll do um, some sketches, a variety of sketches with a lot of different alternatives, kind of nixed ones that you know aren't as strong stick with a few and then I start the pattern drafting process to sample out what it actually looks like in, in real three-dimensional form because you can get all the way to three three-dimensional form of your vision and be like mm, yeah now that didn't come out as like I had imagined it would look what kind of time does it take to do that I mean is this is this you you can do it within an hour does it take days weeks when you see a beautiful piece in your mind and you begin that process, do you put a timetable on it or do you just allow it to, to come, come to being? Uh, the timetable depends on the deadline. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there are deadlines yes. in, in this too. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, if I need it to happen very quickly, it can happen very quickly. Um, if I have the luxury of time, it can just morph and morph and morph and continue to morph and um, never really come to fruition. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about that as it relates to just general business practices because there's something to be said about setting a deadline, putting something out there and saying that it's going to be done and then actually getting the work done as opposed to, as you said, if it's th no deadline, you just kind of keep working on you it. keep working <laughs> on it, right? So how do you use that philosophy in just overall business? I think I, I just realized that I, I am a perfectionist at heart, but you can be a perfectionist to the point of paralysis. And so I just have to realize that um, it's okay to say, this is it, this is good for now, move on, let's see what happens, and then improve from there. That is such an interesting point. Um, I'm, I'm writing a book now, and part of what's in that book is this conversation around perfection and why it is that we are all so enamored with it and think that whatever it is that we're doing must be perfect before we share it with the world. And I'm coming to find out from interviewing uh, several successful entrepreneurs like yourself that this idea of perfection, just like it, it, it's paralyzing as you point out. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> it can be. 
It can be, and so we, we, how do you find ways to get past that, when that thought, because I know it has to come <laughs> up, and I know you must fight it. How do you do that? I just think of everything as a work in progress, and that um, it's part of the journey, and, and it'll get better over time, and each piece that I create may not be the perfect piece that I had envisioned, but there's another life to it that can come after, and I think I take that into all all aspects of my life, which allows me to kind of balance and be able to be the mom and the wife, as well as the career woman, just to realize, you know, oh yeah, I, I kind of screwed that up. That didn't come out like I had intended, but you know what, I'm gonna get better. <laughs> Great, good. Well, you are uh, pivoting to uh, literally our next segment, so <laughs> thank you for doing that. We are, we're gonna take a break, but when we come back, we'll talk about your life as a mom, mm -hmm. um, and certainly as the wife of Steelers, uh, nation, if you will, uh, the Coach Tomlin. So we'll talk about that as well as some information that maybe new up and coming designers need to have as they're thinking about having a design career. So stay with us. We've got more Hustle and Heart when we come back. Are you looking for a way to advertise your business, product, or service? Why not do it here on Hustle and Heart TV? We'd be happy to send you our media kit for show sponsorship and advertising. Reach out to us at info at dariathchisholm.com or give us a call at 412-692-1600 and we'll send you a media kit with all the information. Hi, I'm John Perneris of the John Perneris Agency in Ambridge, Pennsylvania. One of my biggest pet peeves is when the IRS rips you off. We've been in business since 1950 and for 65 years we have been committed into saving you money on your taxes. We keep the IRS off your back and out of your pocket. You can visit us on our website at JohnPernerisAgency.com. Find us on Facebook at Facebook Johnpreneurs Agency for money saving tips and you can call us at 724-266-4100 to book an appointment now. Kia, your schedule, I assume, is extremely busy with all that it is that you're doing with your studio and I'm sure working with several different clients and then home. I mean, the family, three kids and the wife of Coach Mike Tomlin, you have to be very, very busy. How do you balance it all? Um, <laughs> I, do, I, I can't say that I always do it well. I'm, I'm, um, my kids will tell you I'm notorious for... Uh, bringing them to their events, uh, you know, the, the right time on the wrong day. But uh, <laughs> um, I guess I think really with, um, I just designate when I'm going to do what. Um, maybe some planning is important. Um, when I'm, while the kids are in school, I know that's when I need to do my studio work. Anything that needs to be done here, I need to get that done. But stuff that um, is maybe more computer technology based, I can kind of take that on the road with me. And while I'm sitting at, say, a, a, a kid's football practice or a gymnastics practice, I can do that in the car and, and continue my work day. Yeah, it's like a, all of us, right? We just find ways to balance right. it. And what's out of balance, so what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've just, you know, we talked last segment about perfection. Well, that definitely is one area in our lives sometimes that is just, you know, con con spastic. I, mm -hmm. I tell people, don't look in my closets <laughs> and don't open a drawer and everything's fine. Yes. Yeah. So I, I totally understand that. Uh, as it relates to um, just not only balancing home, but then just balancing how you take care of yourself. I, one of the things I know that's very important when we're busy is self-care. And so whether it's um, exercising or meditating, I'm not sure. I mean, foods that you eat, how do you, you balance Kia and, and keep you feeling healthy and strong? Uh, fortunately, I'm a morning person, so I get up early before the kids do, and I get my exercise in 5.36 in the morning, which is also the time that I use to kind of plan my day. Uh, then it's home and off to the races, I guess. So, so really, that's that one little window in the morning is when I, I take care of me, and then the rest I kind of squeeze in throughout the day. Describe your ideal client, the woman who walks in and says, help me. Describe her for a custom for a custom client, um, the woman that kind of knows what she likes, what she thinks she knows, or at least has an opinion on what she feels comfortable in. Um, but then trust me to take those things into consideration and let me design for her. And how does that process work? I mean, if I were to walk in and. Um, <laughs> I guess I should say, I'm going to walk in and I've got this, you know, beautiful affair that I will be attending and I'd like to have a gorgeous one-of-a-kind gown. Um, knowing my body type, I'm obviously very tall, 5'11", mm -hmm. how, how would that process begin for me? Well, we'd, we'd talk about what you like about yourself and about your figure, what things you don't like, um, 
maybe you know you don't like your neck, so you must always wear a turtleneck. So you know we need to take that into consideration. Um, and then um, colors, just any what you feel good about, and then I'll take a look at your figure and and make my own opinion, and then um, draw up a few designs that we will collaborate on. Um, you know, maybe you'll like the top of one, but not the bottom of the other. We can kind of mix and match or make alterations and eventually come to a design that we're both happy with. Do you enjoy that work? Uh, or uh, we'll talk a little bit about your collection, uh, Uptown Sweats, mm -hmm. um, in a moment. But do you enjoy that more so than, than doing larger pieces or collections like this? I mean, where, what, what for you is the most fun? It's really a, a two di totally different things. Um, I don't know that I enjoy one over the other. Um, the custom design is fun because it's always different. But at the same time, I, I don't get to develop necessarily a consistent um, image or brand for my designs. I don't feel it's kind of um, a potluck. If I were to put all my designs for custom clients out in front, I don't know that someone would be able to look at the aesthetic and say, oh, yes, this is Kia Tomlin. Um, I, see, I, you know, I see her vision. Um, whereas with the Ready to Wear collection of Town Sweats, I, I feel like I have um, a theme and a brand and a message. We'll talk about that in a moment, but it, it, back to the, the custom design. Um, can you share with us maybe some, some of the clients or some of the beautiful dresses or maybe some of the events that people may have seen some of your work? Um, let's see. Well, I have designed a few dresses for Greta Rooney for the Steelers fashion show um, over the last few years. Um, I'm trying to think of. Charity, it's a lot of charity events, a lot of mother of the groom, mother of the bride. I don't do wedding gowns anymore, I used to. Um, but yeah, just that type of, custom is, is limiting, which is one of the reasons that I kind of reached into the, the um, ready to wear, is that it's custom design is very time consuming and very costly. So most people that come for custom clients are looking for a special occasion items, weddings, charity events, that type of thing. And um, so it's very limiting. And I just wished, I, I wanted my designs to be able to be on more people for more occasions, not just a one-time wear for that super special event. And that brings us to Uptown Sweats then, that you've really looked for a style that was uniquely yours, mm -hmm. um, ready to wear, and, and really evoked Kia. Uh, tell us more about that. So over the years, I've kind of, I think it's coming of age and having a daughter and just realizing that I didn't, I didn't want to wrestle with myself to kind of fit the, um, the certain image. Um, I wanted just to be comfortable and I, and I started to look around to see what women, what I thought was beautiful in women and I realized it was a woman that's just effortlessly graceful and just at ease and comfortable with herself and, and confident. And, that's what I wanted and I thought with my design background and my background in custom, creating custom garments for various body types, I thought I could help uh, create that um, by creating garments that were comfortable and women felt confident in and therefore they felt beautiful. And you chose uh, a type of fabric that to, to relay that message and, and so how did, that, how did that piece come together? Well, I thought about what I wanted to wear every day. <laughs> and I see, you know, of course, we all want to run around in our workout clothes because it's so comfortable, but it's how many places is that really appropriate? You know, maybe the grocery store, the gym, and at home lounging around. But I wanted that feeling, but I wanted to be able to wear that everywhere. So I decided to create um, sweatshirt, I guess, looks that could take you to a variety of, of occasions. And they're very beautiful and, and quite dressy for sweat, because you can't really call them sweatshirts. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just too gorgeous for that. I mean, these, these beautiful plunging necklines, and then, of course, the larger, more cowl, if, if that's the mm -hmm. description of it. I love what you've done with it, and just the, the, de the matter of detail to what some might call a sweatshirt, and others will look at and say, I, you know, I could wear this out. <laughs> I could. Yeah, exactly, that, and that's what the goal was, to, to take... Yes, to, to really to change the way women dress and, and not have sweats limited to those, you know, workouts, 
uh, at home lounging and running errands. And so are the pieces interchangeable? If you were to buy a few different pieces, you can uh, bridge them together? And yeah, I create them to be versatile. So you can, not, by mixing and matching, you can fit or suit a variety of aesthetics. Maybe an older woman who is just classy and elegant or a younger woman who's, who's edgy and forward. By mixing and matching the pieces, you can, I can kind of cater to the different people. And you can buy them here at the studio or online or just online? Um, online, here at the studio, and then it's actually carried in about four different boutiques around Pittsburgh. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, where are things going for this collection and more importantly for you? Uh, this collection, I'm just moving towards more national exposure. So um, we are in boutiques around the country, not anywhere near as many as I would like to be. And um, I think the ultimate goal would be to get into, you know, more department stores and just be a big brand that people recognize and said, oh, Uptown Sweats can't live without it. Wonderful, great. Um, well, I'd love to take a peek inside the sewing room. I'd okay. love for you to share with our audience, uh, particularly those people that are watching, that that have design and passion, design and fashion as a passion, um, and and don't know where to start. I mean, you, when when you know that, that this perhaps is a business that you'd like to be involved in, I'm sure there's some do's and some don'ts. So uh, we'll dive in to that in Kia's sewing room when we come back. Stay with us. <laughs> So what steps have you taken lately to take your business to a whole nother level? Or are you stuck or stalled? I'd love to hear from you. So send me an email at info at dariathchism.com or you can like me on Facebook at Dariath Chism or on Twitter at Dariath Chism and share your journey. Ask me a question, give me a topic or two or a potential show guest. Looking forward to hearing from you. One place for all your insurance needs? Of course. See State Farm Agent Steve Chris. Call or stop by today. Welcome to Smoke Cigar Shop and Lounge. Come smoke your ash off. Come for the knowledge and stay for the experience. With 15 years in the cigar business, we are here to help you find just the right cigar for you or a gift for someone else. We have cigars to fit any budget and palette, from super premium to hard to find boutique brands. A comfortable lounge to enjoy your cigars, free Wi-Fi, and BYOB with cork feet. Sit back and relax and get the full experience. There's always a lot going on at Smoke Cigar Shop. Sports, news, great conversation, or meetings with your coworkers. To stay on top of all of our events and specials, visit us at SmokeCigarShop.com or on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Smoke Cigar Shop. Download our app at the App Store or Google Play Store. We're open 10 to 9 during the week and until 10 Friday and Saturday, Sunday 12 to 5. Remember, smoke cigar shop and lounge. Smoke your ash off with fine butts and hot ashes. Hey kid, let me tell you about the Soul Pit. And I want you to let everybody know about it. Soul Pit is what's happening in and around your city. Soul Pit is on the internet and around the globe. Soul Pit is on your block and in your car. Soul Pit is in your ear. It's in your hair. It's everywhere. Soul Pit is the latest news, hottest styles, culture, education, information, and more. It gets you ready for things to come. Hey kid, you know what the Soul Pit really is? It's a little something extra for your soul. Hello, I'm Nikki Narvaez Mans, and I am the founder and owner of Nikki's Magic Wand. Nikki's Magic Wand is a cosmetic tool that is designed to retrieve all of your leftover makeup from small tubes and containers. And you are watching Hustle and Heart TV. Ah, we've made it into the sewing room. <laughs> this is where all of the magic happens. <laughs> Some of the magic. <laughs> Some of the magic, right? Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful in here, though. I mean, clearly all of the, the equipment and all the tools that you need for the trade. Yes, and all the mess. <laughs> <laughs> So we talked a little bit about how you, you began to form a concept and, and where, you know, you take it from design to actually, you know, implementation. But then after, and let's maybe just talk about Uptown Sweats, because since we just left off talking about that, um, you do most of the, 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 the sewing, obviously, for the, the protege. The prototypes. The prototypes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happens from there? So after I've designed the pieces and done a few samples to make sure it's, it's what I want, then I send the patterns out to, for grading it's called and that's where 
they're broken up into the different sizes. So when I design, I'll design and say a size medium. Um, I don't have to design all the size range. I send it to a company and they do that for me using mathematical formulas. And then from there, it's sent to a factor in New, factory in New York to be um, produced. And from there, that factory produces in all of the various sizes and then ships to your respective um, the sh Yes, ships to retail? me, ships to retailers, mm -hmm, wherever I need it to go. Great. And I assume you have a company that helps you or a team of people around you to facilitate a lot of that. I do have a team. They don't, aside from my design assistant that's here with me every day in the studio, they don't work here with me, but I do have a team of people that handle the, um, the overall production portions of it, I guess. I project manage it, but I have the head of the, uh, the owner of the factory. I work with him. He's part of my team. The um, person who does my photo shoots and organizes that, she's part of my team. And my production um, managers out of Chicago that help with the pattern grading and digitizing part of my team. Having team is so important to success, and especially if you see you, yourself scaling your operations up. But getting to the point when you've just started a business and you've got to take that first step to bring someone aboard and then even find the collaborative partners that you have, how do you go about that process? And how do you make the decision to find the best team members and partners to get the job done? I look for people that understand my vision and what I'm trying to do, um, understand where I'm trying to take it and, and my brand and what it means, and, um, and is also excited about it. <laughs> yeah, and they've got to be sold on the brand, right? They've got to know what the mission is and where it's going uh, and put together a team that, that gets that. And uh, finding the right people is obviously quite important to, to the evolution of that. When you are thinking about where you're going, and we talked a little bit about the fact that you want to grow it to a point where it's in lots of retail establishments and, and continue to grow, is that a one-year plan? Is that a three-year plan, five years? How, how, how do you see yourself evolving uh, into that as an entrepreneur? I see that as more of a three- to five-year plan to get where I ultimately want to be. We have uh, people who watch our show, and, and I'm so grateful for and thankful for who are just starting their businesses. They're, they're dreamers. They're, they're you know, doers. They're passionate around uh, what it is they see themselves evolving into. And, and for those people that are interested in fashion and design, they've got to get started, right? You, every time anyone decides that they want to move forward, you've got to start to take steps. How would you encourage someone who's interested in design and fashion to begin who has no clue except this desire to be a part of the industry? To research the industry, um, that's one of the things I wish I had done because I think there are so many um, avenues within the industry that you just don't know about that maybe I, maybe I love design, but maybe I don't need to be a custom designer. Maybe I could be a costume designer for um, Broadway or there's just so many different avenues. So really to research that and then also just to get out there and, and learn, get hands-on experience any way you can. Um, read, research, um, learn about all the various aspects of the business. You don't need to do all of them, um, but to have some background information on it and then to be able to find the people that could help you with those areas that you don't want to do. For someone who is in business, who's already in the design industry and perhaps um, are, are uh, in moving in the footsteps or the direction that you are, maybe they've got a few sewing machines, a couple of patterns, a couple of designs out. How do they take their brand and their business to the next level? I think it's imp once they determine, I guess, what their brand is and there's um, some consistency there, I think that that's important um, for outsiders to be able to identify what it is, what is your, your theme, what is your point. Um, then to, if you're, I guess it depends on which way you're going, if you're looking to manufacture ready to wear as the way I'm doing it, would be to find a factory that's suitable um, for what your needs are and to move forward that way and examine how to, um, how you're going to afford it to do it and, and how you want to do it and, and where your ultimate goal is. What's been your biggest challenge? What, what would you say to date? Um, as it relates to the growth of, of Kia Tomlin, the line, everything that you do, what has been your biggest challenge? Hmm. I think maybe standing in my own light, I think. Um, 
I think people, I want, I want people to like my designs, not be distracted that I'm Mike's wife. I think that's probably my biggest challenge. Do you find that happens? That, that all of a sudden it's not about that, but it's, oh, you're Coach Tomlin's wife. I mean. I think it's just not knowing if it's happening. I, um, I just don't trust it. I, you, people may say, oh, this stuff is great, it's great, it's great. But is it really great? <laughs> so you think that, that they're really only interested because you're his wife, and then where you feel is that you want them to see your light and look at your work for you and like take the Tomlin name off of it and just see Kia. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know that I've experienced that. I just don't know. Mm -hmm. But I have that just, I guess, uncertainty in the back of my mind. We all have uncertainties, mm -hmm. and they exist on a variety of different levels. Some of us face fear and doubt about, you know, am I good enough? Is it, is it good enough? Are people going to like it? Can I actually get it done? Uh, those are the things that, that in many instances stop so many people from moving forward. How do we get past that? Just realizing that you, perfection, you can't achieve perfection. You can't wait for perfection. It's, you're going to just end up waiting. Uh, you have to just kind of jump in and swim, and by doing that, you'll be exposed to other experiences, other opportunities, learn from your choices, and, and really to consider them choices. I think we're so afraid of making choices that will make life uncomfortable for us, um, but I see it as our choices really just dictate experiences that we learn from and grow from. And, and sometimes in that uncomfortable place, we find ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we leave our show um, with two tips that we like to drive home. And, and I like to think that we've talked a lot about a lot of different things. But uh, the show is entitled Hustle and Heart TV. Mm -hmm. and, and I truly believe that as an entrepreneur, you're doing those two things. Mm -hmm. You're hustling and you're loving what you're doing. So share with us a hustle tip. I don't, when you're following your dream, I don't think you're ever going to be comfortable. I think that if you are, are comfortable, that means you're not growing. Um, you're not striving and, and reaching beyond um, what you can do. So I think you're always going to be uncomfortable and don't fear that. And your heart tip? Just love what you, do what you love to do and the rest will fall into place. And if not, you can sew it into place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got to pick up a couple of pairs of those Uptown sweats. They are so comfortable. The fabric is great. I spend so much time working in my home office. Uh, I love that they're long for my long legs. So Kia, great design. I can't wait to, to uh, wear some of your Uptown sweats. And thanks so much for being on Hustle and Heart TV. You want more information about Kia and her clothing line, head out to our website at hustleandhearttv.com. And you can take a look at her show notes page with all of the uh, tips and tools that she offers to you, as well as resources and links out to her website. Okay, I also want to take a moment to really thank those of you all who nominated us for the podcast awards. We asked a couple of weeks ago if you would head out and nominate us for best produced and best video podcast. And I am so grateful for everyone who took the time to do that. I really appreciate it. Fingers crossed, we're still waiting to get information. And as soon as we have it, I'll let you know. Hey, it's Tam Michelle with Tie the Knot Tuesday here at the Pittsburgh Marriott City Center, where we take care of all of your event and meeting needs brilliantly. And today we are talking about centerpieces. The Pittsburgh Marriott offers amazing packages, some that even include your centerpieces. You'll meet with our preferred vendor and design your own centerpieces. Whether you're thinking of bling, maybe you're thinking something very romantic and subtle with candles, you'll take the time to sit with our preferred florist and she will design your centerpieces to fit your wedding day. For your wedding and event needs, like us on Facebook at the Pittsburgh Marriott City Center and call us at 412-918-1373. And ask for me, Tam Michelle. Keep smiling. This is not a hotel. It's an idea that travel should be brilliant. Because it's not only about where you're staying, it's about where you're going. The promise of spaces far beyond your imagination. 
We're here to advance the art of hosting so you can make the most of your journey. Pittsburgh Marriott City Center. Travel brilliantly. Trouble can find anyone. At Frank Walker Law, we take the time to understand your situation and work tirelessly on your behalf. Hard-hitting representation when you need it the most. A real law firm getting real results. Hello, I'm John Perneris, and I'm the owner of the John Perneris Agency in Ambridge, Pennsylvania, and I will see you on the next episode of Hustle and Heart TV with Daria Chisholm.